see any. I don't see too many people here either. I guess it's the end of summer and people are out worshiping God in the fresh air. Um, but let us begin worship of Almighty God. Please join me in the response of call to worship from Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try to test my heart or do not. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not seek to reverse, nor do I resort to hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence. And go around and watch their Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, Lord, I love the house that you dwell and the place place where your glory abides. Grace to you all and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord of summer sunshine and autumn harvest, be with us this day as we gather to encounter your word and your way for us. Remind us that we can place our trust in your eternal love. Enable us to be more effective in our witness to that love by word and deed. Guide our steps and pick us up when we falter. Dust us off and place us on the pathways of grace and service. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn is number 58. And I again ask you to mask up if you're going to sing. Thank you. But 
for children's time, we are going to stay seated in our safe places. Please be seated if you'd like to be seated. So our time with the children will be from your pew. And the rest of you can be my pretend children. Okay. So everyone, how did you get to church today? Vehicle, walking, anybody alive today here? You walk? Some people walk. Okay, good. So, how did when you came in the building, how did you get to your seat? Walk. Well, okay, like, did you just jump right over like Superman, or did you climb the pews like goats? What did you do? How did you get where you are, Robert? Like a goat. He went like a goat, of course. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of you walked to the right, and then you turned left, and then you turned left. pretty straight. Did anybody forget anything and have to double back? The bulletin. The bulletin. <laughs> you had to go back and get your bulletin. Well, I often have to double back. And that's why I'm always late. Um, it seems like I'm never going to get where I'm going. But life is like that. We are all on paths. Some of the paths are straight and others are curvy. Some go forward, some twist and turn and seem to go backward. There are times when we are confused and we just want to get off the path and go our own way. Anyone here ever feel like quitting? Anyone ever want the school bus to stop? Or your mom to take you to Dairy Queen instead of to the dentist? My parents used to let me get shakes after my dental visits. I think it was to numb the pain. But I still had to go to the dentist. I had to follow that path to good health. So in all aspects of our lives, Jesus calls us to be faithful to his pathway. And when we are faithful, we can learn many things and help many people. When we place our focus on the journey and the things that we can do to help others, we are following the way of Jesus. Jesus wants you to follow him. I'm going to do a little reading from, from our, our gospel reading today. It's Matthew 16. And in Matthew 16, verse 24, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up on your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. Now take up your cross means to like take up your burden, to do the hard task, just like Jesus did when he went to the cross for us. Jesus loves you and will always be with you. So path walkers, God is blessing you and preparing you for special journeys of hope. Our sweet reward will be being in heaven with God and with our loved ones. And that's great news. So God is blessing you. May God bless you always and keep you safe. Amen. Now, beloved in Christ, let us open ourselves to God in confession, trusting the Lord's desire to give us peace as we pray the prayer of confession printed in our bulletins. God of love and mercy, be with us this day. We have faltered in our service to you. We create divisions between various people. We judge before we listen. We condemn before we make any attempt to understand. Our lives are eternal, and we confess that we have turned away from you. It is fear and anger that too often surrounds us, and our actions become based on those fears and anger. Slow us down, Lord. Give us hearts full of flowing with grace and compassion. Help us to hear Jesus, who loved and healed others, who rejected by polite society. 
to be strong voices of hope for those who feel alienated and lost. We are called to be home to strangers, to quench thirst and to give nourishment, to welcome and bring words of hope. Forgive us when we have forgotten these things. In Jesus' name we pray. This morning's Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the book, that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are, where you are standing, is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. 
When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Romans 12, 9-21 Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And in Matthew 16, 21 through 28, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the, hand of the elder, hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's readings are familiar to us. They've almost become cliches for Christians. We hear Moses learn of the great I am. Peter rebukes Jesus, who tells him, get thee behind me, Satan. And we see iterations of Paul's exhortations to love one another and to hate evil. 
after I read and reread our lectionary, I kept coming back to the same concept. God's plan is not our plan. God's ways are not our ways. We nod our heads. We've heard this before. We've experienced it when we wanted a comfort which seemed to be denied to us. We felt it when we wanted healing, but instead dealt with sickness and brokenness. We comfort one another by saying it. God's ways are not our ways. Friends, what are God's ways? What does that mean? God calls us to love others, to love God's justice, and not our own version of justice. God saw the injustices done to the people of Israel. In God's time and in God's way, Moses led them out of slavery. God provided God's justice. Paul said to lay down our thoughts of revenge. He quoted Deuteronomy and reminded us it is God's place to avenge wrongdoing. Jesus told Peter that we humans are concerned only with ourselves, but not with God's concerns. He said that God will reward each person according to their actions. We can leave our, no our notion of justice alone and let God handle things. God's way, not ours. But let's look at that more closely. What is justice to our omnipotent, all-seeing, and all-loving God? Is it allowing the Israelites to be fed and housed under Egyptian rule? In other words, is it allowing evil to continue to be inflicted on God's people as long as they are kept with the barest minimum of life's necessities? No. God's justice was made a witness for us as God sent Moses to do the hard work, the uncomfortable, lifelong work of rescuing the Israelites from first the Egyptians and then later in the desert from themselves. And what about Moses, God's instrument of deliverance? In our reading today, Moses asked God, who should I say sent me? Any parent or manager recognizes this strategy. Moses is dragging his feet on this. He feels embarrassment, uncertainty. He had left that uncomfortable place of self-reflection, discomfort, and regret in Egypt, and he had found a refuge. He was in a safe place. Staying with the sheep in the wilderness would be easier than going back and facing his past. God wasn't having it. God, our creator, said, I am who I am from generation to generation. Go. This is the path, God said. This is the way of the great I am. Do the hard work for God. Do the embarrassing work. Do the heartbreaking work. Speak out. Speak up. Keep going. Accept the children and work to remove them from cages. Work to release adults who are unjustly imprisoned. Feed the hungry. Suffer with and guide those who are trapped in addiction. And empathize with those who mourn. Address the issues that lead to domestic violence. Do the work for God's justice. The New Living Translation of Romans uses plain language. Today we heard the New International Version, which is a solid translation using familiar words. But the New Living Translation's words are, are less familiar to us, but they elucidate our reading for our modern understanding. Hear now the word from Romans 12 in plain speak. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. 
When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. The scriptures are no longer cliches. God's word speaks to us directly. We are to do what God wants, not what we want for ourselves. We are to stand back and be quiet when we try to tell Jesus what to do. And when we question if we must really love the unlovable or if we must really welcome those we don't want. And when we disagree with God's plan to care for all parts of creation, our understanding is not God's understanding. Sometimes for us, understanding others is the hard work. Sometimes the hard work is having faith when we do not understand God's plan. When we face criticism for our Christian view of love and action, even from within our own church community. This is where we take up God's ways and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Beloved, draw upon the strength of Jesus. Feel the Holy Spirit guide you. And don't resist if you feel the Spirit guiding you away from your own misguided actions. We all stray from loving our neighbors. We all puff ourselves up. Let us follow Paul's admonition to live in peace with everyone, not abiding evil, but honoring others while hating what is wrong and helping those in need. This is God's way. Let us pray together. Lord God, send your spirit to lead us toward the paths you planned for us lending us the strength that comes from knowing our connection to you is sealed in the promise of salvation given through the teachings and sacrifice of Christ Jesus. Remind us that we are forever your children, your holy creations, and guide us so that we are not blinded to the wrongs we see and the wrongs that we perpetuate in this life. Open our eyes and help us to use our hands to your glory as our lifelong work. In Christ's name, we give thanks and praise. Amen. At this time, would anyone like to share a joy or a concern that we can bring before God? John's dad.
No, would you be comfortable coming up to use the mic to do that for our audience? So I did a lot of reading this morning, and um, you know I thought about times that we may have coming up ahead of us, but really any times in our life that are, are dark or we're uncertain in things that we're facing. And um, I read this morning from Luke 12, uh, chapter, or verses 22 to 26, and it's about not worrying. So the thing we just need to remember is we're not supposed to worry. Jesus said that himself. There's nothing that we can do by worrying. He's like, if you can't even get an hour to your life, that's a little thing. You can't even do that. So we're not to worry. So which is, you know, we feel, we start thinking about stuff and what's going to happen if this, what's going to happen if that, and we start worrying about it. So <laughs> we're not to worry. And then I read from Ephesians 6, um, verses 10 through 12. And that's about being strong in the Lord. So the thing is, is we need to know we need to be strong. And we need to know, you know, we're not going to use our, our energy up by worrying. We're going to be strong. Our struggles are not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we're going to be warriors, we're going to be strong. And then Matthew 16, 18. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. We are standing on a strong, solid foundation on God. We are promised that evil is not going to overcome it. So we're, we're promised that, you know, this the foundation we're standing on, where we are safe, you know. We still have the battle. We still need to be strong, and we still not need to be worried. And then from Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, <clears throat> is about putting on the armor of God. God gives us the armor. We actually need to put it all on. So once we put on the armor, we have some power behind us. And the other key to that is, you know, we're supposed to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So we're armed, we're powerful, and we have constant communication with God. So as we go forward, be strong, be courageous, know your enemy, armor up, and uh, keep in communication with God and stand your ground. And then that will help us to do everything that Joe was saying, <laughs> following God's will, loving everybody, because we have the power behind us to do it, and encouraging each other through, you know, prayers, you know, conversations, you know, thinking about each other, you know, reaching out. So we stand together as a group of brothers and sisters, a family, we stand in God's word, and we stand strong. So that's my encouragement to you, all of you guys this morning. Thanks. So I'm going to restate what was not heard through the mic earlier. Um, Bob Muller, John's dad, is not doing well, and the siblings are all going down to take turns to take care of him, and John's going to be down for about a month. And so we are hoping good things for his family as they, they have so much stress right now. And um, Tammy asked that we pray for safe travel for all of them as they go attend to Bob. Also, Nori's 
stated um, as the uh, chair, probably, for our OCC mission, our Operation Christmas Trail mission, uh, normally our packing party where we kick off the, the mission season, um, normally we do 50 boxes at that packing party, and Lori had it on her heart that we need to do 100 boxes this year. So she's trying to figure out the, the financing for that and the time, and even how to do it. How do we do a socially distant packing party? She's, we're going to pray on that and discuss it. But she said that the lockdown uh, around the world has affected um, the destitute just tremendously. And so they're in critical need. Um, and so we are being called to do 100 boxes for our kickoff party, our packing party. Um, and of course, we are blessed with uh, Nori's spiritual leadership. And we'll praise God for that. Are there others, joys, or concerns? Okay. And let us bow our heads and bring our concerns to God. Lord of hope, we come to you this day. We have followed many paths, and the one of hope leads to this doorway. And in our hearts this day, as we share our joys and concerns in prayer and in the actions and service that follows, we lift before you situations, people who are in need of your healing mercies and your peace. Help us to be those who would bring peace to them. As our lives have encountered difficulties and concerns, so too are we blessed with great joys. Lord, in your love, hear our praise. We celebrate these moments of happiness and wonder with each other, lifting up joys and celebrations in the congregation this morning. But we also pray for those who have troubles. We pray, Lord, for Bob Muller. And we pray for John as he handles transitions and as he travels. We pray, Lord, that you will have your hand on our Operation Christian Child mission, helping us to do what you've called us to do, to help those who have less. And Lord, we thank you for the encouragement shared by Nori today. Nori has been such a strong leader in our church, and we praise you for for that gift. Lord, bless all those whom we have named before you in our hearts and with our voices. Touch each life with blessings and peace and mercy. Give us strength and empower us for the ministries of reconciliation. We ask all these things according to your will, and we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is 461. Please stand and wear a mask if you sing. Mm -hmm.
God sent Jesus into the world, so the Spirit now sends us to continue God's holy work. May you go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of the Father, the Son.